we were here and we were anticipating okay let me say roughly more than a year ago yes, we were anticipating exactly. elections 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 and then professor charles chokoma saluda won and then we were anticipating when this government will start will we be disappointed and those kind <laughs> of things and now hula the government is a year uh, already a year in office uh on march and it's already 17, looking like it was five years <laughs> <laughs> on march 17 uh, the saluda administration or the solution agenda uh mantra uh came on board uh on march 17 basically governor Chukuma saluda was sworn in at the government house in agoka and last week it happened to be the one happened to be the one year anniversary but because of the elections of last week, every, every um, concentration were in, uh, on the elections. Uh, today, uh, there will be a town hall meeting at the International Convention Center where the governor will be presenting his scorecard as well as the road ahead document uh, to look at um, what uh, will happen in the next three years of his administration. Well, we want to look at the scorecard and also look at where we're going to on the program. So we have with us this morning to discuss this very important topic, Honorable A.G.K. Okechuku. He is the member Anambra State House of Assembly, Chairman House Committee on Education, and as well as uh, the member representing Anocha to State Constituency. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, brother. Good morning, man. So on, on behalf of ABS mm. and our viewers, we want to congratulate you on your victory. Thank you. Not, the victory is for all of us, for the generality of our nurture to constituency people and for Anambra state in general. And yeah. I want to say this. You see this <laughs> particular election, whoever won is a strong man. <laughs> yes, what sir. I think is that you must have delivered. delivered over, over, over. There is nothing. The issue is that uh, I, you really worked. I worked for it. I won, but this case... Are still there. <laughs> but, but I also think the fact that you won should make you understand that I obviously was doing so. I was doing something good. I was. I yeah. won. Yeah. In fact, uh, as uh, you know, uh, the people's vote, the people's votes counted mm. on yes. that election. So it's just more or less like a, 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 an a appreciation of yes. what yes. an endorsement of the people. And I appreciate of the much that I was able to do by the people themselves, okay. not the other way around. And you know that uh, my constituency is one of the hottest, <laughs> if not the hottest <laughs> in an <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you consider the the um, the thing that is going on the on the lips of uh, almost every youth of yeah. late, so I still thank God and thank my people for the faith they yeah. ha they still have in me. All right, let's get into the discussion, uh, solution at one, analyzing the scorecard. And I want us to start it from the committee where you are heading. Uh, the, you are the chairman house committee on education. Let's start from education. Um, we've seen the recruitment of 5,000 teachers in Anambra. We've seen the digitalization, increased digitalization of education in Anambra State. Uh, what will you tell us that is uh, the driving agenda of the present administration in that aspect and how you, as a member of the legislature, is also supporting uh, that move. Okay, um, I know that uh, uh, Mr. Governor came prepared to govern an Embra state. And if you look at the People's Manifesto, which is the driving uh, manifesto that the governor presented to the people of an Embra state before he was hired. Mm. Uh, you see that he is uh, following that manifesto religiously. Yes, uh, the employment of 5,000 teachers, mm. to me, is uh, a, a step up on the already uh, program that the previous administration started. Mm. And that uh, program started by the previous administration I believe was orchestrated by the motion I moved on the floor of the house sometime in June 2021. After having a, an in-depth uh, uh, investigation into our uh, school system and the death of teachers in our education system. And that motion and the resolution of our members was, uh, the resolution was passed by our members. Mm. 
and uh, transmitted to the former governor of Anambra State. And uh, shortly afterwards, the governor of Anambra State approved the request of the then Commissioner for Education to uh, regularize about 1,200 PTA teachers. But the present governor, in his wisdom, said that the process was not uh, good enough. You know, he is a perfectionist. Mm. He wants things done in a perfect way. And uh, he didn't just say uh, that it wasn't uh, well uh, organized. He also felt that the number was too small because uh, my report then was uh, requesting about 7,000 teachers for secondary and 5,000 for primary, okay. totaling about 12,000 teachers that I needed in Anambra State. So, and uh, 1,200 is grossly inadequate mm, to, that uh, to that number. So Mr. Governor, in his wisdom, decided to increase the number of teachers to be recruited mm. to 5,000. And you see the, the strenuous processes that the would-be teachers or the candidates went through before they were eventually uh, recruited last December. So I think that Mr. Governor is following his manifesto, mm. the promises he gave to Anambra people. He didn't just uh, employ those teachers. You know a theory of uh, motivation. Mm. You think about Thorndike's theory of classical conditioning and the Skinner's theory of operant conditioning, where you see uh, motivation in action. So, the, Mr. Governor knew that to motivate teachers that are already employed yeah. will also uh, be beneficial and be an improvement to the educational system of Anambra State. And I believe that's why he increased the take home salary of teachers by 10, uh, either 5 or 10 percent. Um, okay, by 10 percent. And that is another kind of motivation. This will now prompt the teachers to, devote, to be more devoted in the course of teaching. So in all, uh, both the uh, employment of 5,000 teachers and the increment in the take-home salary of the teachers are geared towards improving the standard of education in an embassy that had always been at the forefront or at the peak, uh, at the driving way of other states. Okay. So this governor wants to improve it to go beyond what other people uh, or what other states are even envisaging because they, comp they continue to play catch-up to Anambra State, and we continue to uh, increase or accelerate our speed. Right. Thank you. I, I'd like to look at the road network. Mr. Governor did promise that he was going to work on roads. He, in fact, he called it a priority. And yes, currently we are aware that a lot of roads have been commissioned. But people are scared that with the speed he's going, do you think he's going to stop? <laughs> <laughs> Some people are saying that. Ah, in case every day with Arua goes, Arua goes, Arua goes, or all just the way you get. Yeah. So I would like you to 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 talk to us concerning uh, Mr. Uh, Governor and his road agenda for the Anambra. Like I said, that Mr. Governor came prepared. You know, he he had his first shots uh, towards governing Anambra State in 2010, mm. and uh, ever since then it is about uh, uh, 13 years mm. now. So. Um, he had his mindset on what he wants to achieve in an Empire State. Honestly, I don't know the magic Mr. Governor is doing to construct those roads. Because I, I'm a House of Assembly member. I know what comes into the state. I know what comes from FAC monthly. I know the IGR of an Empire State. I know that he sought and got approval from the House of Assembly to uh, secure a loan of 100 billion naira to be used strictly on critical infrastructure development of the state. And I also know that I personally spoke to Mr. Governor about one month ago, asking him whether he had succeeded in securing the loan, and he said no, that he was yet to secure the loan. So the magic he is doing, uh, in fact, I know that what he has succeeded in blocking some leakages mm. of the IGR of the state and the wasteful spending of the state. He had cut costs in so many uh, areas to be able to be doing what he is doing now. Mm -hmm. And I must say kudos to him for that. Not just that he's doing road, roads, rather he is doing good quality roads. I have been opportuned to pass through some of them that are completed. Mm -hmm. I've 
been opportunity to pass through some of them uh, that are still in progress. You see the earth work, the compacting, you see the, the stone base that is between nine inches to one foot. You see the, the, the in fact, the, the whole thing is, is, is super, is of international standard. Okay, I'm um, still on this route. Um, like Lucy said, 261 kilometers, uh, more than 261 kilometers of roads across the states in one year. Uh, we also have seen that the distribution of these roads are virtually across all the local government areas. Like she said, and you also said that uh, looking at what he's doing, that it looks like over ambition. Uh, but, um, what is the, let me say, where are you also looking for when it comes to road infrastructure? Uh, we've seen what he's doing. What are you looking forward to again uh, when you look at what he's doing already? And in the next three years, what kind of uh, vision or implementation of the vision already had in the road infrastructure that you want to see? Having uh, uh, flagged off 261 kilometers in less than one year, <laughs> I believe that an umbrella by Taiwan is achievable eventually. It is because uh, in the next two or three years, uh, with improved revenue, Anambra will be littered with good quality standard roads all over. Mm. Uh, because, uh, like I said, the Mr. Governor knows where he is going to. And you see all these contractors. I have been opportunity to speak with Mr. Governor too. And he said that if he doesn't have the money, he don't have to uh, award any contract. That anyone you see him awarding, he has already earmarked how to pay for the the contract, mm. uh, gradually until completion. So he has his plan. He has his sight set on something. If you listen to him, he will tell you, um, Aina Abia, Aina Abia, we are coming, <laughs> we are coming. And you see that confidence in him. Yeah. You see that confidence in him that uh, he is actually coming. You know, and uh, roads. Uh, the major need of any average Anambra man. Okay. And he knows that. If anybody is going to Mr. Governor to make one request or the other, I bet you at night, 8.9% of such requests are come and do our roads. Mm -hmm. The only encouragement we'll give to Mr. Governor is to perform our civic responsibilities by paying our tax. Mm -hmm. That is just it. <laughs> I believe that if we do that, that our tax money will be at work. And uh, I don't think that it is a bad thing for one to pay tax. I'm happy you mentioned tax. It is not a bad thing for I pay my own tax. My own tax has been directed monthly from my monthly uh, salary. Uh, I pay it and it is pay as you earn. Mm. It is not as if uh, oh, government will now use we can to develop the state. So we owe Mr. Governor that, whereas he owes us development of our state. Okay, so like I said, I'm happy you did mention tax. Um, during this administration, I think it was the beginning of the administration, mm. there was that misunderstanding about tax. But then all of a sudden, it was as if the wave died down. Nobody's talking about it. People are no longer agitating for tax. So, um, I'd like to know how this, the government handled this. What uh, did it happen? You know, now people understand. You know I'm a lawmaker, not a policy maker. <laughs> I'm not okay, really... I know, but I know that during that time, <laughs> even in the KK, we're also tagging you people. No, no, the issue so is this. Uh, we have a, a, a governor with listening ears. Okay. I believe that the board of contention then was not just the amount being asked them to pay but the mode of payment mm. yeah. is yeah. like they want to be paying daily and the government wants to be paying a, a box some monthly and uh, that is the discrepancies because they were complaining how would they be paying on a day that they don't work yeah. okay. so i don't know how it was eventually resolved but i know that mr governor was on top of the situation there was time he called them to a meeting and they dialogued and agreed on the modus operandi of making oh, no, the I was actually looking uh, at maybe payment. you now educating us on the importance of that tax because a lot of people don't understand the importance of paying I think tax. I've done that already. I said 
Okay. Uh, taxes are paid by citizens, good citizens, uh, for the development of the state. You know, the problem we have in this part of the world is that most of the times, when such taxes were paid in the past, the citizens don't see uh, the use of those taxes. Mm -hmm. That is the major problem. So it is the issue of trust. People lost trust in government. But now, with Mr. Governor telling us, if you go to most sites where he's doing the roads, you see signs, you are taxing money at work. Mm -hmm. People are now being encouraged to at least know that if they pay government a token from what they earn, that the government will use that judiciously to develop the state. If, okay, look at yesterday, I came across uh, the uh, publications that he entered into a, a, a partnership with EEDC yes, for uninterrupted power supply in Anambra State. You see how proactive he is. Nobody is, even had uh, thought about it coming. It has already uh, signed a memorandum of understanding with EADC. If eventually it comes to play and we have uninterrupted power supply in Anambra State, at least, let's say, 18 to 20 hours of power every day, mm. what do you envisage? You will see factories springing up. You will see cottage industries coming up. You will see employment being come to the barest minimum. Mm. That is where we are headed to. That, that is where this government is headed to. And I must tell our people that uh, the little we part with, the little we, we part with to the government, so far the government is using this money judiciously. We don't have to regret doing that with this present administration. Hmm. Uh, talking about the fact that you're from the legislative uh, arm of government and you also gave us a, his, a history behind the recruitment of the teachers in Anambra State, um, let's look at the relationship between the executive and the legislature. Because um, it is also very important uh, to ensuring that we have a stable administration and stable system in Anambra. We've seen it over the years happen. Um, how would you describe the relationship between the Anambra State uh, Legislature, Anambra State House of Assembly, and the executive arm of government since the coming of the Saluda administration? Honestly, the relationship has been very cordial. Very, very cordial. Uh, because Mr. Governor, knows that we have three arms of government. He respects the legislative arm of government. We, in turn, respect the executive arm of government. You know, uh, things are done according to the dictates of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, anything that needs legislative uh, backing, the governor don't just go in, dive into it without first of all getting the backing of the legislative arm of government. So I believe that the relationship has always been very clear. There has never been a problem between the executive and legislature in Anambra State of late. Mm. There has never been. And uh, you know, another thing that is equally good to mention is that since the ruling party also produced the majority in the legislature, I don't think that because it is like uh, a partnership that that is very healthy for the state. Mm. And you, that is the essence of all these developmental projects we see going on because of the cordial relationship between the legislature and the executive. Going forward, what are you seeing? The same. The same cordial relationship. There is nothing uh, uh, to, to showcase any chaos or uh, disaffection coming, coming up. Uh, yes, but you know before the elections on... Um, uh, March 17, the President of the Federal Republic signed into law several amendments to the Constitution, including uh, the independence of the state legislature. Um, for some of us who are uh, in the media, also looking at some of these indices, uh, we're also projecting, is that, will that uh, new signing or will that new allowance in the Constitution in any way affect the relationship between the Anambra State uh, Judiciary and the Executive? Honestly, I don't see it happening. We had always enjoined some air uh, of, uh, of uh, autonomy in Anambra State House of Assembly. Mm. We have enjoyed it, and I don't see it as a problem. You know, there is no problem that dialogue 
cannot solve. Okay. I don't see it happening. And uh, we are partners in, in development of Anambra State. Once we understand it that way, I don't see us having problems. We are partners. We, we are hired by our people. You just congratulated me now for winning my election yes. uh, just about a week ago. What does that imply? My constituents, they have just hired me. They pay me. Mm. It's not even the government that pays me because it is their tax money exactly. that, that is being used to pay my monthly salaries and other, exactly. other, other uh, whatever. So they pay me. I owe them that development. And how do I do that? I do that through making good laws that are beneficial to the state of Anambra State, that will improve the living standard of the state, that will give us that livable and the prosperous mega city, as mm. uh, uh, always clamored for by Mr. Governor. Okay, so let's talk about this solu um, solution, the solution agenda. And I'm happy you said you were hired by your people and you're paid by your people, not the Anambra State government. So my question is, this solution agenda, did it get to the grassroots? Did it get to the hinterland? You represent grassroots. So if we go to your community now, do they feel the impact we feel in the capital city? So I'd like to know the reach. Yes. You, when you, uh, your colleague was um, uh, analyzing the, uh, the spread of the road networks in Anambra State, he made mention that the uh, contract or the road construction presently cuts across the 21 local governments in Anambra State. Mm -hmm. So what does that imply? It implies that both the rural, the semi-urban and the urban areas are being worked on simultaneously at the same time. Uh, by, by about two, three weeks before the first general election, the presidential election, the governor was in my place mm. to flag off a road linking Akweze, Adazienu, and the Nokwa. And this is in the heart of the rural area. And people are happy. So what I'm trying to say is that what is happening at the urban areas are also happening at the rural areas. But I believe that the distribution is about 60 40. Mm. Urban areas bearing the, the pressure of, of a, a population densely populated, mm -hmm. bearing it more gets about a little higher than the rural areas. Mm. But it is, it is, a, it is a, something that is going on across the state simultaneously. Yes. Even the teachers that are employed, mm -hmm. the teachers are distributed amongst all the schools in Anambra State, whether at the urban or at the rural area, based on the teacher need of such schools. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm happy you spoke about the teachers too. <laughs> you keep reading my mind. Okay, now, um, during the employment of a teacher, I read a post you made on Facebook where you said, um, teaching is a business of people who studied about education. So my question is, in this administration, I understand that you are in the House of Assembly, but I know that in a democracy there is checks and balances. And so uh, your um, uh, organ of government checks on the executive. So my question now is, those people who don't have background in education, who were not employed by um, the Ministry of Education as teachers, during this one year in government, was there any other plan for a recruitment, training, of anything that doesn't have to do with education? Or was it just the 5,000 teachers? No, you know, the major problem we have in this part of the world is that every one of us wants to do white collar job. Mm -hmm. But I started my, my own growth mm -hmm. as an artist because I studied further applied arts education. Uh, and then I acquired enough skills that, that shaped my entire life up to today. I was into sculptural works, I was into metal works, I was into paintings, and all was not. So uh, this program of one you two skills that the state government is on now okay. is another avenue to take our youths off the street, to get, make them, to get them gainfully uh, employed by themselves. You see, uh, uh, I believe that it is high time we have our own renaissance. And what does that mean? Let's go back to our roots. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that route is where we had our people doing all sorts of things by ourselves. You see this uh, apprenticeship that is uniquely uh, started by the Anambra people, a bad boy. Mm. Our people are jettisoning it now for other vices, Yahoo, quick monies, okay, and all was not, mm. that are not right. But it is time we go back to them. Uh, 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 to our 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 our, our, our roots mm. because this Igbo boy led a lot of our people today uh, and uh, now you don't see our youths going into uh, panel beating going into plumbing mm. going into other skills and you see people imported into Anambra doing them and they earn a whole lot more than the civil servants mm. They end it because they end their wages on daily basis. Most of them, if they are masons, they, most of them are being paid 7,000 naira a day. If you multiply 7,000 by 30 days, it is 210,000. Who, who earns that as a government worker? Who? Nobody does. So I believe that Mr. Governor is trying to balance things out because he knows that government will not be able to employ everybody. And they continually, every year, our universities are churning out uh, graduates. We must go back into learning one or two skills. I was on Facebook last night. One of my Facebook friends was saying that the scale of hair plating she learned while in Nigeria is what she she's using to she's using to earn her living now in UK. Mm. You see what it means. Yeah. If she had not gotten that scale while she was here, she, probably she may, she might be stranded in in United Kingdom. But today she had that skill and it is preparing her off in UK. We have to encourage our people to at least have two skills. You don't know which one that will take you to where you are. Mm. I started my life because my late uncle uh, came to my house when I was in secondary school and saw me dying clothes. Mm. And he said, ah, you, are, uh, you are studying finance. I said, yes. But which course did you uh, want to study in university? He said, law. He said, no. You must, because he's a lecturer in the university. Yeah. You must go and study finance applied arts. I adhered and I obeyed his instructions, went to the school, studied for the applied arts, and look at where I am today. Because after my graduation, I never went to look for a job anywhere. I started practicing what I studied. I started earning my own living. And at 25, I got married on my own. Yeah. Yes. So you see me starting. And today, you see me where I am. It is encouraged that our people should go uh, embrace this program of one two skills as uh, by the state government. And I also know that Mr. Governor will in no distance time look into because you see the third arm of government is like going down gradually. Mm. I know that it is uh, almost 20 years or over 20 years when the last batch of people are employed in that area. And you know what it means if people were employed in the local government system last, about 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, what it means is that we have less than 15 years for the last person to retire. Yeah, exactly. uh, so I know Mr. Governor might be looking toward the direction to maybe to employ a few more people for the local government to keep the system alive and well, running. <laughs> it's been a very powerful one having you here. Uh, like you said, you wanted to study law. Now you are making law. <laughs> you are saying the business. Now I'm actually regretting not studying fine and applied arts because I could draw very well. And my parents were like, study fine and applied arts. I, I was like, man, I'm book a board. I'm actually regretting that decision. You see, most of I'm the time, that's that. why I, I, as the chairman has committee on education, I always encourage the these authorities that are saddled with the responsibility of career choice of our students yeah. to make it clear to them because most of the times when i was in secondary school during the career day celebration they will only package lawyers doctors engineers yeah, and bring to us as, 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 as if others are playing mm. and i you see most people will go to university study public administration study all kind of courses that cannot make them self-employed when they leave schools 
And then they were, you know, if, uh, thank God you were following me on Facebook, you said, I don't know. Yeah, uh, doing the recruitment, most people that never had anything to do with education, reading, teaching, uh, as a pro or being a professional teacher, they were all scampering to be employed as teachers. And I made that post to listen. I'd rather employ a professional that, sco that scored 40% than employing a non-professional that scored 60%. And that is it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Honorable. <laughs> it's been a very insightful 30 minutes with you here. Uh, we have here Honorable AGK Okechuku Obuefidu. Okay, if you have forgot to introduce him that way when we started, he is the member of Anambra State House of Assembly, Chairman House Committee on Education, and as well, member representing an or two constituency in the State Assembly. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you. Okay, uh, thank this you. Morning. We are hopeful that whenever we call you again, you'll be here to join us. I'm always available. <laughs> All right. Thank and, you. Uh, for me, thank you so much. At least uh, now I know mm. that there's really nothing wrong with... In fact, some of the skills you rate high might not even make you self-employed. Yes. All right, so now we'll go over to our breakfast news desk to bring you breakfast news this morning. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>